All right, this is a park here, and these are the new Tax Neo Motion plates. We haven't seen an update to the Tax Neo since 2019, but Garmin, who owns Tax, just released these new motion plates that are compatible with every Tax Neo ever made. The new motion plates are compatible with the original Tax Neo, Tax Neo 2, and Tax Neo 2T. The motion plates are meant to be mounted on existing Neo Direct Drive trainers and provide a fore aft movement to complement the slight side to side rocking motion the Neo already offers. You see, when you ride your bike indoors, your rear end sits on a saddle that is kept in place by a rigid trainer that does not move much. And with each paddle stroke, your body moves side to side, backward and forward, but that saddle does not move with you, creating a lot of friction, which can make your longer ride very uncomfortable. So many companies set out to resolve this by creating different solutions to make the bike moves as your body moves. Likely the most notable solution has been the rocker plates. You've probably seen a lot of variations of them. I also reviewed a number of them on this channel. So these motion plates are meant to provide additional movement to help with your ride comfort. But the big question is, do they work? I'm going to get into that along with all the details, but before I do, if you take a quick second to hit that like button below to help the channel and the video quite a bit, I would really appreciate it. Okay, the Tax Neo Motion Place retails for 300 US dollars. So what do you get for 300 dollars? Basically two plates and a front wheel stand. The front wheel stand included is different than what comes with the Tax Neo. This one sits a little higher than the original stand and allows for additional wheel movement to accommodate for the movement of the motion plates. Installing the plate is extremely simple. First, you need to pop off the rubber feet under each leg and place them in this little cup holder they made for them inside the motion plates. The plates easily snap on magnetically to the under side of the Tax Neo Direct Drive Trainer. Uh, place the Neo back on its wing and make sure the trainer is aligned with the plates. And you can use the notches on the side as a guide to make sure it is aligned perfectly. Next, place the front wheel block under the front wheel and make sure the arrows are facing forward and the wheel is centered with the block. And that's all there is to it. You are ready to ride now. The two plates work by sliding back and forth using bearings that sits in a curved slot to help the plates center themselves. The motion plates will add 49 millimeter of fore aft movement. As you ride in the saddle, you will feel a slight back and forth motion with each pedal stroke. That's in addition to the side to side motion the Neo already has. Also, because of the wider opening in the front block, and I am using a 25 millimeter tire here, you will feel more movement in the front handlebar as well. The max tire width you can use with the front wheel block is 28 millimeter, but I don't see why you couldn't use the old fashioned foam book trick if you have a wider tire than 28 millimeter. At first, the motion might feel a little strange, but you will quickly get used to it and the feeling and you will get used to the movement. I found this motion is best when riding in a steady state, particularly in erg mode, or if you are just doing structured type training, particularly in TT position where you try to be in aero position for a long period of time. I think for that type of riding, they work very well. This slight back and forth movement along with the side to side flex allows the bike to move with your body as you pedal and is really all you need. Getting out of the saddle for climbing or sprinting can feel a bit wobbly. The, your pedal and the motion from the place will be off sync. I felt this more when getting out of the saddle in erg mode than when in sim mode. I think you'll get used to it after a few rides, but you can always remove the place if you plan on doing a long climb or a lot of sprinting and then put them back on later. I do wish Garmin added some kind of a locking mechanism to lock the place from moving for those times when you want to disable the fore aft movement. So are these plates going to feel as comfortable as riding rollers or riding your bike outside? No, there is more physics to it than just that. These don't have quite the same free motion feeling that you get from riding outside and or rollers. But overall, I think that fore aft movement you feel with the Tax Neo motion place is good and will add a lot of comfort. I've always believed that back and forth movement will by far make the biggest improvement to your ride comfort. So the motion place retails for $300. Yeah, not cheap, particularly when the Neo already costs $1,400. 
So that's $1,700 investment. I think that total price may be a sticking point for many, but is it overpriced? Is it a good deal? Is it worth it? Well, if you want to add this type of movement to your Neo, you have some options out there. There are only a few plates out there that offer this type of forward backward movement and they all cost over $800. The Cirrus MP1 is $1,200 and the KOM RPV1 plus the four aft plates that you need to buy alongside with it will cost you around $800. The only problem with these plates is they are bulky, not easy to store or move. They also add a lot of height to the Neo, which already sits a little higher than other trainers. Also, they will add an additional side to side rocking motion, which I don't personally like since the Neo already has a little side to side flex and that slide to side movement then he already has is really all you need when you are in the saddle. Your other option is a do-it-yourself which can go either way depending on your engineering skills and if you already have the right parts and tools to build one. This brings us back to the motion plates. They are custom designed for the Neo, fit perfectly, store easily and don't add any bulk and they just work. There is really nothing like it out there. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is price might not matter at this point because the plates do exactly what you want them to do. And if they are going to make you enjoy riding your bike more indoors, then I think they are worth it. Okay, let me know what you think. And if you have any questions, let's chat in the comments. Hope you find this video helpful. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you are still watching and have not subscribed yet, then you know what to do. Thank you for watching and see you guys in the next video.